You got that much energy? Well, I've got some real work for you. It'd be a lot better off. We let you kill yourselves. But she called me a... Which is what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Up on your feet. If I can have your full attention now, all of you. This is Colonel Donahue. He's a commanding officer in this area. He has something to say that might be of interest to you. You inviting us to a dance at the post, Colonel? <laughs> I'll take you, Whisker Belly. <laughs> Silence. Keep your mouth shut and listen. All right, ladies. I'm authorized to offer you much more than an invitation to a dance. For those of you with any daring, I'm offering you a chance to get out of this stockade forever. Changed a bit. Hey, a little thinner, maybe. I worry more lately. <laughs> I was hoping you'd come today. Things have been happening here. Captain Shering, this is Killian, the man I was telling you about. Captain Shering's a geological engineer with our topographical corps. I've already told him about you. Well, at least that didn't take any big words. <laughs> Killian, we received the news yesterday. Uh, Congress has approved the annexation of Texas. Are you not surprised? Clay and all the others who voted against it were swamped when it came down to a vote. Because it's only a question of time until Texas ratifies it. And when that happens, it'll mean war. Mexico isn't going to give up Texas without a fight. Can't blame them much. Now, here's an immediate problem. According to our scouts, Mexican troops are concentrated along the border here, around Camp Grande. Well, if they should attack, we'd be unable to transport troops and equipment down there in a hurry. It takes three weeks now. Now, your job is to guide an expedition to find a new route. One that's shorter, more accessible than any we're using now. Well, can't I just uh, try that alone, Colonel? The word expedition doesn't read too good in my book. A well, route you find will have to be mapped. Engineers will have to do that. And there's another consideration. You're going to take three cannon along down there, will you? Yeah. Well, you'll only take them as far as Valero. That's a deserted town here. Oh, it's about 55 miles north of Camp Grande. Been through it. You'll be met there by a party of four Texas Rangers who'll take the rest away. You're just brimming over with good news this morning, Colonel. What happens if we're spotted by a Mexican patrol? Well, the cannon will be disassembled, hidden under the flooring of the wagons. 
Uh, you'll still be a party of soldiers heading south now. Most Mexicans I know wouldn't take too kindly to that. No one will suspect that the train is comprised of soldiers. The expedition will be disguised as an ordinary wagon train made up of a few families going west. There'll be women along, posing as the wives of the men in the outfit. Women? <laughs> Well, just where do you figure on getting women in these parts? Please, Captain, take me. She's pregnant. Only five months? I've got plenty of time. I'm very sorry, ma'am. Relax, Captain. She ain't accusing you. How old are you? 30. All right, 35. 40. Nobody can prove that. Besides, I'm in good health, and that's what's important. I can make that trip easy. What are you here for? Well, it was all a big mistake. The sheriff was coming up for re-election, and he was on this campaign to clean up the town. Well, someone told him a lie about my business, gave him the wrong idea altogether. What kind of business was that? I ran a boarding house for refined ladies. What do you think? Depends on your soldiers. They're engineers. They should be safe enough. I tell you right now, you ain't gonna find anybody better than Lottie Clampett. I don't shrivel up in the cold and I don't melt in the rain. I can drive a team and I can shoot the backside off a bear cat when he's sitting down. That she can. She and her two baby brothers were road agents. Held up 12 stages, killed a driver, wounded another. Take her. My name's Nancy Delacourt. Perhaps you've heard of my family, the Delacourts of Virginia. We came out here after the flood took our plantation. Is that true? Sir, a lady doesn't lie. She came out from Virginia, sure enough. I don't know about the lady part. I beg your pardon? Man trouble. He was a friend of my brother's. I naturally assumed he was genteel. You can imagine my shock when he made improper advances. Then what happened? I shot him. She'll do fine. Uh, hi there, good looking. How about me? Yeah, how about you? Are you taking mules? Because if you are, I think I can help you out. I'm Maggie Britt, the best mule skinner in this territory. Well, we ain't taking mules. Oh, you're taking horses, huh? Well, I'm a fine blacksmith. In fact, there ain't nothing I haven't done. <laughs> I believe that, ma'am. Yeah, huh? Why is she here? She stabbed a trooper. Claimed he was trying to attack her. What's your name? Do you speak English? She can speak it, but she won't. Patagosha. Mitane. Your name is Mitane. This one's a bad risk, Captain. After all, you'll be in Apache territory. They don't look lightly on their women mixing with whites. Might come in handy. She'll come with us. Hello, Fiddlefoot. You owe me $80. Was it that much? Mm. Well, you see, I had to leave rather unexpectedly. Didn't even bother putting out the fire, did you? Let's be honest, Killian. You said you were going to stay for a week, but you were really planning to leave the next day, weren't you? Well, I never have run on schedules. <laughs> I know, Scout. And I hate sad goodbyes, so I took the money to dry my tears with. You know this lady? I don't see any lady. He knows me. You want to take her along? Well, Captain, you're picking the horses at this auction. You have mares so far. How about a filly or two? It's up to you, Killian. You want her or not? Answer the man, Killian. I asked him the same question once. He stalled then, too. Well? Sure, why not? As far as I can see, she's the pick of the litter. That should do it. Thank you, Warden. You that were picked, take a bath. Not just a rinsing, you hear? A real scrub down. That goes for you, too. You want to watch?
sorry bunch of steers. They look better with their uniforms off. How do you know? Oh, she means in civilian clothes. Ladies, if you'll step down now, I'll pair you off with the men. All right, let's get paired. <laughs> hey, Fiddlefoot, which one of us are you taking? All of you, honey. Step forward. Lottie Clappett. You'll be riding with Elmer Cass. How are you? You don't look much like a soldier to me. Well, I'm an engineer. Well, now, don't get riled, Elmer. It's just you don't peer like you could lick a small dog, let alone a parcel of Mexicans or Apaches. Well, don't you worry none about me. Maud Weber. Yo! You're with Sergeant Frame. That's me, ma'am. You look a little old for your profession. You look a little old for yours. Gene Marshak. Doesn't really matter, Captain. Any one of them will do. You all know the purpose of this expedition. Until we reach Camp Grande, we'll be computing latitude and longitude, determining altitude, and calculating gradients. In short, we'll have plenty to keep us busy. As for you women, you'll have to depend upon yourselves for your comfort and safety. Don't look at these engineers for any gallantry. You'll have to cook, help drive the wagons, maybe even shoot. Any woman who refuses to obey an order or who deserts, the deal to pardon her will be off. Now, Mr. Killian is in charge of this train, and you'll all obey his instructions. Is that clear? Anything you wish to add, Mr. Killian? Captain, what you didn't say ain't worth saying. Of course, there ain't much you didn't say. Now we're losing daylight. Let's move them out. Why I look so worried, darling? Well, it's gonna be a long trip, and I'm not sure I can handle a team that well. Sweetie, before this trip is over, you're gonna be surprised at what you can handle. Tribe located, Missy. Well, I guess this is better than having some lame brain female blabbing my ears all day. This way I can do all the talking. Ever done any fight? That ain't our job. 
But don't you worry, lady. We'll handle any engines come our way. What with a piece of drawn paper? The only danger they're gonna be in is falling off their horses from laughing. And then we had to move. I mean, after the flood. And there was just nothing we could take with us. I mean, nothing. You know what it's like to lose things you've lived with all your life? No, ma'am. Well, it's heartbreaking, that's what it is. I mean, it, it's enough to break your heart. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, ma'am. I, I know what you mean. Hits post the guard, Hearn. Yes, sir. And the rest of you men, you haven't touched a rifle in over two years. You better see Sergeant Cass here for some rifle practice. Elmer, they better see me. You? That's right. Killian, how far you say that dead sapling be? Oh, about uh, 30 yards. <laughs> Captain, looks like you got yourself a new instructor. A little rusty. I wouldn't say so. Not me, the rifle. Now, gather around here. We'll start right at the very beginning. This here's the butt. Don't look like no butt I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Two twos and two threes. Aces over fours. Not enough. Three little fives. I <laughs> never seen anybody so lucky. <laughs> you think so? Luck runs in streaks, you know. I robbed a poor-looking saddle tramp once. He had $1,100 sewed up in his coat lining. Ooh, <laughs> then another time, me and my brothers, we waited six days for a coach was supposed to be loaded with gold. Turned out we only got $16. <laughs> <laughs> then on top of that, Floyd the Youngest shot himself in the <laughs> foot the <of> stupid That's enough. Did you hear me? I can't. I can't. 
Tell me what's going on here. Nobody told me I had to sleep in the same wagon with that savage. Miss Delacour, you heard me when we left. You women will obey orders. Now, you were assigned to sleep in that wagon, and you'll sleep there. Oh, I will sleep there if you will kindly put her somewhere else. You will do as I say. And if there's ever a repetition of this incident, I'll have you horsewhipped. You wouldn't dare. You no, know something, Captain? I think she's right. Uh, you've got too much breeding for a thing like that. Now me. I think I could have handled that without your histrionics, Mr. Gillian. Now what? You had no intention of using that whip. Wouldn't bet on that, Captain. It's all right now. You can go back to the wagon. She won't give you any more trouble. No, I do not go back. I do not sleep in the same wagon with that woman. Why don't you let her sleep in our wagon? You ain't gonna prove anything by them killing each other. All right. Come on, Lieutenant. <laughs> I could trap on it much longer. Oh. Well, I don't reckon you can. Oh. Feels broke to me. Oh. Broke? Yep. Yeah, I'll get the captain to have one of his men take you back. Where? Stockade. Yeah, you wouldn't be much use to us with a broken ankle. Oh, is this not broke? No. Nope. Yeah. Sprang a little, but not broke. Look. See? Fine. Yeah, I oh. figured it would be. I'm sorry to have to make you walk, man, but. Gotta rest those horses whenever we can. Yeah, looks like you might have to run to catch up. <laughs> Take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take it in the red pants, take it in the door, take
Might step on your toes. Oh, you already have. Funny, I figured it was the other way around. Sure you did. You figured any dance hall girl was fair game for one and all. No, I didn't have much trouble. No, you didn't. Did it ever crack that buckskin brain of yours that maybe that... The only thing that cracked my buckskin brain was the fact that my pockets were empty when I woke up that morning. I only took one dollar. No, the first time I bought some eggs to cook you some breakfast. That's right. Can you imagine me cooking you your breakfast? I had all kinds of big ideas walking out of that store in my gingham dress. I got to thinking about what you said about staying on. I started dreaming about all kinds of things. So the blacksmith called out to me and said he had a message for you. He said that your horse was ready for your journey. So I decided to leave a little message for you myself. You took $80. That's a lot of message. <laughs> So far, the women have been taking the trip pretty well. Anything's better than where we were. Been trying to figure out which of them might stampede at the sight of an Apache. We all might. Well, don't. The last thing we need is a wild shot at what might turn out to be a friendly Indian. You sound as if you're expecting one. One's been dogging our trail for two days. Right now, he's out there about 100 yards. Got it in, but I can't get it out. Oh, mercy, please, not so hard. Oh, Maud. <laughs> Horse liniment, that's dandy. You mean you're going to drink that vile medicine? Better that than wasting it on the horses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find anything for a base? Only this. That's whale oil. Well, it's just a few drops. Oh, come on, Maud. My pappy always said if it burns, it should be fit to drink. What's the matter? It needs something for flavor. I found something. Oh, no! Not my lilac water! Oh, please! Honey, you've been pouring that sweet-smelling concoction on your person ever since you left, and it ain't done you a bit of good. Now, with one drink of this, when you start sweating, you're gonna smell like a flower for a whole month. Ready, girls! Figure that, and you won't want to think. <coughs> Whew. May I? I do declare. I think we should invite the gentleman to join us. Oh, 
Drunk. It's stupid. Not more than about ten gallons left. Oh, I feel terrible. Mister, you have really come to feel terrible. I'll discipline my men, Kilgan. What are you going to do? Bust this pencil? Right, we got to find water. Get them together. We're moving out. But how can they look at them? They can and they will. What about the water hole? Sir, all right, but it's been fouled. West? Any water in this hell hole will be that way. Uh, follow me, Hearn. We're heading them west.
Water's down to near nothing. Gonna have to cut off the horses. Well, they won't last long. Yeah, I know. Maybe the squaw can tell us where we can find water. What's going on? What's going on? We planned to give this weeping willow here a haircut, that's all. Why? We caught this lady of quality stealing water from the barrel. I get so thirsty, I couldn't help it. Well, that's a serious offense, but I don't think it's any reason to... She's lying. She wasn't drinking it. She was washing her hair. We got so filthy. Bloody. Oh, no! My people would kill her, but they would not scalp her. Now well, she'll have less to worry about with less hair. Look, we need water and fast. You know this part of the country? I know nothing. Well? Oh, I don't think she's going to help us. Our situation is very desperate, Mr. Day. You wish me to help you? Yes. Then I will help. into a trap. Yep, she could. What do you think? I don't. You're the one she said she'd help. All right, then. I trust her. But stop trying to talk yourself out. It is a secret Apache spring used only by the warriors before going into battle.
Thank you, Metternich. out. Nice and slow. Easy. Easy. Apaches. Apaches know many springs. We are strangers in your country. We must take water where we find it. The spring hidden, like nest of eagle. How did whites come here? Now this girl brought us. She's one of your people, but she's married to one of us. The soldiers have stolen our horses and killed our braves. We're just settlers passing through, Chief. We wish harm to no one. What these men are saying is true. They mean no harm to your people. You are not Mescalero. No. I am of the Lipan tribe. My father was Tomesco, mighty warrior and great hunter. How is it then? The daughter of Tomesco marries with the white man. There is change in the land. These people are friends. Do not improve their friendship. Fire weapon. I have not seen one such as that. It is newly made. You will give to Cadete. No guns, Chief. Tobacco, sugar, that's it. Kill you, don't provoke him. You hang out of this. It is forbidden for other than Apache to drink of this water. For law say, we must do battle. You mean you uh, got to fight over this water, is that it? All right, then we'll fight over the water. But just you and me. Then your honor will be taken care of. All of us can go about our business. You challenge Cadete. Agreed. Knives to death. Knives? Whoo! <laughs> lordy, lordy, you are a bloodthirsty bunch. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, uh, just hand to hand. Agreed? Agreed. Show off. Killian, I don't like this. You're taking a big responsibility on your shoulders. Well, what would you rather do, Captain? Take them all on? Oh, I think maybe we could win, all right. Kill maybe three of them, only give up, say, uh, oh, one soldier, two or three women. But suppose you lose. I intend to. Oh, I don't look so shot, Captain. We're not fighting to the death. Fighting for his honor, not for mine. Killian. We fight over water. It is only right we fight in water. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, we'll be moving on. And you will never return here. Oh. Hello there. You, sh you two should have placed Betsy. They cleaned up. I was tempted. You were right, Gillian. He didn't give us any trouble. You mean they didn't give you any trouble? Better get a moving. All right, let's go. First fill that water cart and get the horses down here. All right, Bishop, get the water wagon down here. Let you guys take care of the stock. Come on, let's move. Texas Ranger's supposed to be here waiting for us. What do you suppose they could be? Last time I supposed a thing like that, I wound up with this job. Well, what should we do, wait? You got no other choice. Horses can't go another mile without a rest. Gotta wait the morning anyway. Well, at least we can sleep inside tonight. That should be a welcome relief. Killian. Rangers and they're wearing Mexican uniforms. Elmer, pass the word along. Tell everybody we got company and to act natural. I'll handle this, Killian. Sure will, Captain. My job ended when I got you. Senores, Lieutenant Juan Miguel Santos, at your service. You're the first people I have ever seen here. This town does not offer much hospitality. Well, we don't plan on staying. We're just some homesteaders from Mississippi heading west. My compliments, senor. It is not many who would venture across Apache country without an escort. I guess you might say we have more luck than sense. 
How convenient for you not to have brought children with you, huh? They would have slowed you up considerably. Oh, that wasn't pure accident. No, we didn't want to pick any couples that had kids. We figured we wouldn't make it with them. But a man and a wife should have children. Myself, I am not married. But I have many children, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Lieutenant, you just give us a little time, we'll try to catch up. Ah, uh, si, senor. Entendido. <laughs> Buenas tardes, senora. It is so nice to see you. Amigos, I will tell you this. This is very dangerous country. I would advise you to leave while it's still possible. Adios. Adelante, muchachos! Adelante! I think we got away with it. Maybe. Let's find out. Mud, what was that all about? I think he recognized me. What do you mean? Well, over the years, a lot of men have visited my establishment. I sure recognized him. What do you think? Well, I'd sure never forget her. the horses. Earn your initial, take the first guard detail. All right, move them. Those soldier boys could get killed tomorrow. We all could get killed, Lottie. Yeah, we could. But that's different, kind of. Those poor boys would get killed defending us. That's right. Just think, our very own husbands fighting for our honor. That's one way of putting it. It's the only way to put it. I hear you talking, Maud, but you're passing me by. How many of us have ever had a man willing to risk his life for us before? Now, if them poor boys was to die before we could thank them, why, that'd be a sin. Wouldn't it? Oh, Marty girl, you're a genius. Just a seasoned campaigner, that's all. I do declare, Maud. I know now what I'm going to do. Oh, don't try to fool us, dearie. You've always known what you were going to do. Maud just pulled the plug. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen any of our wives about? Come to think of it, they've sort of disappeared. Probably hiding. Probably. Scared, no doubt. Yeah. Going, sweetie. Well, I was. I mean, I gotta take this to the fire. Who needs a fire? Marty, what's the matter? Ain't you never seen a woman with flowers in her hair before? You, uh, sent for me, Miss Nancy? Husband, the time has come. Ma'am? You may kiss me. But, but, <laughs> look, I, I, I ain't really your husband. Mr. B. 
Bishop. Do you know how sick and tired I am of all this propriety? Huh? Now you kiss me, you hear? What are you doing here? I cook for you. I can see that, and I appreciate your consideration, but I'm really not hungry. I stay with you. That's impossible. It is what I wish. Mitane, it is only the moment we find ourselves in that allows you to say such words. I speak words, but they are true. You've got to understand, once this thing is over, you'll be free. You'll be able to return to your own people. I do not wish to return. I look at you in your eyes, and I see the same expression I have seen in the older ones of the tribe, the learned ones, the wise ones. And I see the same expression in the eyes of you, a young man. It pleases me. I don't know what to say. That is good. To seek a truce, use words. But when a battle approaches, no words are needed. Those Mexicans could return. Yes. We could all be killed. Yes. You know this, and still you come to me for what could only be one night. For a woman, spoken love can sometimes be enough. But for a warrior facing battle, there should be more. Another quick goodbye, Killian? I don't plan on them, they just happen. I thought we were supposed to wait for the Texas Rangers. Plan was to meet them, not wait for them. There's only one reason I've ever known for a Ranger to be late. You think they've been ambushed? But don't give me one of your silly answers like I only think when I get paid. I hired on to lead a wagon train down here to Valero. I did. You women agreed to come this far, you did. From here on out, it's strictly an army headache, not mine, not yours, all up to the map maker. What do you think he's going to do? Oh, those maps are pretty important to the army. I think he'll probably ask me to take him up to Colonel Donahue. And I got a hunch he'll figure it's his duty to take those cannon on down to Camp Granny himself. His duty, not yours. I've scouted this country a long time. It's always been Mexican land. I got a lot of friends scattered around here. When the war breaks out, it's gonna be damn hard for me to take sides. Then why did you take this job in the first place? Because that's all it was, a job. I don't look at the right or wrong of things. I leave that to the politicians. Which is another way of saying it's their worry and not yours. That way you don't have to get involved. <laughs> oh, I don't mind getting involved. It just depends on what for. Now, if it was a sweet invitation from you, of course, that might take a bit of thinking about remembering what happened last time. The girl sure has to go an awful long way to find out you're alive.
Good morning, Mr. Killian. Let's hope so. What a note of dissent. It would appear luck is with us. If those Mexicans suspected us, they should have attacked by now. Unless that lieutenant is as smart as I think he is. Went back to get more men. Well, no matter. I made up my mind. I'm moving on to Camp Grande. Yeah, I figured you would. I'd like for you to take those maps we made back to Colonel Donahue. Sure. Heading that way anyway. You're going to deliver the cannon, huh? Try to. Those Texas Rangers haven't shown up yet. My guess is they won't. What about the women? They'll be coming with us. We're still settlers heading west. That doesn't make sense. Those Mexicans come back and find those cannon, you'll all be dead settlers heading nowhere. The women have done their job, same as me. You suggesting you want to take them back with you? <laughs> no. no. No, that only slow me down. No, there's a territorial settlement about two days due east of here. Now, you give them a wagon, they can make that safe enough. Captain, there's no point in risking their lives any further. everybody. Hearn! Coming! Frame! Yahoo! Isham! Sir! Bishop! Appears on the eve of battle, all the rules get broken. Wouldn't you agree to that, Captain? All right, now listen to me. It's obvious now the Rangers aren't going to meet us here. So we're taking the cannon on to Camp Grande. That is, we men are. You women will take a wagon and head east to a territorial settlement where Mr. Killian says you'll be safe. No! No, we're going to stay here. Should. We, we like men right with you, men right with you. Right we need with you. each men. other. I swear, I'm not leaving this young boy. Why, he needs me. And you can't break us up. We won't have a chance until we break him through. Ladies, ladies, that's an order. You're leaving now. And may our thanks ride with you. Looks like you got the making of the mutiny on your hands. Ladies, me and you are no longer needed or wanted by the military, so let's obey the captain's last order and move out of here. Now go on and get your gear. Hitch up Frame's wagon. Give him a hand. Keep it on. That sun will go right through that bald head of yours and warp your brain. I promise, Lottie. So long, Grasshopper. If you ever look me up, I'll try to be there. Don't tell me you're going with us. No, sweet Annie. I'm going to point you in the right direction. Captain. What are we going to do now, Gillian? When you were learning to become an officer, did they ever teach you about the Battle of Pine Woods Creek? Yeah, as a matter of fact, they did. Well, that's what we're going to do.
Buenos dias, senor. Good morning. Dropping by for breakfast? Perhaps. Yesterday, I saw one of your women. All night, I think of her. And then I remember, this woman, she has entertained me frequently. Oh, I think you must be mistaken, Lieutenant. <laughs> Such things a man does not mistake, senor. This woman is not what you say she is. It's possible your wagon train is not what you say. I've never said. True. But we're about to go to war, senor. Perhaps your wagons are carrying guns to the Texas garrison. I hope not for your sake. Yesterday we met four Texas Rangers. We had to kill them. You, the women and the men, if you're carrying arms, you're also dead. You're welcome to look. <laughs> Amigo, I plan to look. I was uh, gonna do a little hunting, but I'll ride back with you. Muchísimas gracias. I was about to suggest the same thing. Get your people out here, senor, or you are one dead man. By the way, Lieutenant. Bishop! Iron! Bring! in history, like the Battle of Pinewoods Creek? I don't know about that. But, Captain, between your men and those women, you got the finest army south of Kansas. Can you make it, Corporal? With my suit and hands, he could make it all the way to Mexico City. Come on, don't let those prisoners rile you, none. That'll be the day. Marty, any of those men get loose? Don't worry, I'll plug them. Howdy, right, gal. Well, 
well, Jeannie girl, we got us a ways to go. Not as far as you think. Let's move. 